And uh, I get a phone call from Wooster. He's like, hey, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm working. He's like, I need you to jump on a plane by three o'clock, drop everything you're doing, get on a plane. There's a chance, there's a chance, an opportunity. Not even, you don't even have a fight, just an opportunity to, uh, to be in the UFC. I said, okay, not a problem. Uh, put all my stuff down. I, have a, I had a client at the time. I said, look, I gotta go right now. I just ordered a bunch of equipment for my gym that I have. Uh, I left it in the parking lot, didn't even care. Uh, ran home as fast as possible. I called my wife, said, hey, give me a suitcase. Just put it by the front door. I just did a bunch of laundry, threw all my clothes in that suitcase, jumped out. Uh, Rooster texted me and said, hey, you still need blood work done. So they scheduled blood work. I had to run all the way up north, uh, get blood work done. This is, this is 1.30, by the way. So I get blood work done, and then I get to the airport by 2.10. Got the phone call at 12.45. Um, I was at the airport by 2.10, ready for a flight at 3 o'clock. My name is Jason, the Vanilla Gorilla Wit. Uh, I'm from Kansas City, Missouri. I fight out of Glory MMA and Fitness, and my record is 17-6. and six. Uh, I had a great upbringing. I have uh, great parents. Um, my real parents got divorced when I was about two, and then my stepdad came in the picture when I was about three. Uh, and my stepdad's been very supportive over my entire career. He's been to every football practice, every baseball practice I ever had. <laughs> and uh, my parents are both great, very supportive of uh, everything I do. I'm only a child, so it kind of helps out that uh, they only got to worry about one kid. But yeah, I, was, I had a great upbringing. I was about 19 years old, and a couple of friends of mine were like, hey, we're getting a gym membership. Um, we started lifting. And uh, uh, me, and a, me and a friend of mine ended up getting in a fight about that time. And I ended up winning the fight, and then somehow a couple years later we found each other. We started doing kickboxing together, and then uh, I talked to my uncle, who used to be a professional kickboxer and boxer. Um, I ended up talking to him, and he's like, hey, do you want to train with me? Like, is this something you want to do? Uh, started training with him, and then just kind of took my first fight and I lost, and just kind of moved on from there. So MMA or even martial arts was never something that I was into. It just kind of fell into my lap and something that I fell in love with. I was a 21-year-old cocky kid. I mean, it wasn't really, a, was I ready for the first fight? It was more, uh, you're kind of on top of the world thing. Nobody can beat you. Um, I took, I literally started training and then six weeks later I had a fight. It's just the way it happened. To win an MMA fight, it's, it's, it's probably the best feeling in the world. Like that's, that's, that's a, I know it's very cliche, um, but it's definitely, it's definitely one of the best feelings in the world. It's a lot of, a lot of time and effort you put into, put into the fight and you kind of, uh, you, you understand the risk I was talking about earlier. You understand the risk of what happens in, a, in an MMA fight. So once you get that done you, and you win, it's just that, uh, that reward you get from that is just worth, worth the, uh, the trouble and everything you went through to get there. Um, what, is, it, is, it, is it the opposite feeling to lose? Uh, man, losing is way, <laughs> way worse. Yeah, it's, it's a terrible feeling. It's, uh, it's horrible. Um, it just makes you kind of rethink of what you could have done better, what you should have done. And for me, it's, it's something that, that helps me kind of prepare better for future, for future fights, for future, uh, for future training camps, all that stuff. It kind of makes you reevaluate what I, what I should have done or could have done. Or, and, and if I could have done anything better, if I, just, if I just got beat, that's, that's the way it is too. But it's a terrible feeling. It, it really, it's, um, I don't really care too much about what people think, but talking to people and you know, going in knowing that you lost, like walking back in here is a hard thing to do after you lost because you, you, know, you know you lost. And, Everybody knows how that is. They, they they understand. They feel for you, but it's like it's still it's still a uh, it's still kind of a it's a rough thing to do. And nobody loves losing, especially especially me. I bother the crap out of house. He's uh I he's, he's he's probably like Jesus Jesus man, leave me alone. Like I'm done. Leave me alone. Uh, I'll, 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 kind of stuff yeah yeah yeah. Uh, I'll text him. I literally I'll text him like once a week. Like hey, they'll text me like hey, this fight went through because of logistics, because of plane. I'm like, so I think I text him. Uh, I think it's going to be last Saturday, not, not, not this Saturday, it was the last Saturday. I was like, hey man, logistics is not a problem. I can make it to Vegas in, in three hours. Uh, I can jump on a plane, no problem. My weight's good. Uh, I've been training hard. Like, just, just, just give me a shot. Uh, he calls me like two minutes later saying, hey man, uh, let's look at August. Let's look at September a little bit later on. Maybe contender series, maybe something like that. And uh, man, I was, I, was, I was a little bit crushed. I really was. Like, I was like, ah, oh, I've put all this work in. Um, but we got off the phone call. And I was like, okay, you know, I felt I felt good. I felt like they were working for what you know what what I needed them to do, and they, they do a great job. They really do. Um, but I'm a very impatient person. I'm like, Look, just give me my shot. I'm, I'm working my ass off. Again, it's Saturday. That was Saturday. Um, I'm like, okay, good. I'll just kind of take it easy. My body wasn't feeling great, and then this whole next week I went into went in training and good, and then 
uh, didn't feel great that Thursday. And so I didn't actually come into the training Thursday. And then it's 12.45 and I'm at work. Um, and I'm literally eating Chipotle chips and guac. Like just, just kind of like, okay, I don't have to make weight for a while. And uh, I get a phone call from Wooster. He's like, hey, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm working. He's like, I need you to jump on a plane by three o'clock, drop everything you're doing, get on a plane. There's a chance, there's a chance, an opportunity. Not even, you don't even have a fight, just an opportunity to, uh, to be in the UFC. I said, okay, not a problem. Uh, put all my stuff down. I, have a, I had a client at the time. I said, look, I gotta go right now. I just ordered a bunch of equipment for my gym that I have. Uh, I left it in the parking lot, didn't even care. Uh, ran home as fast as possible. I called my wife, said, hey, give me a suitcase. Just put it by the front door. I just a bunch of laundry, threw all my clothes in that suitcase, jumped out. Uh, Wooster texted me and said, hey, you still need blood work done. So they scheduled blood work. I had to run all the way up north. Uh, get blood work done. This is this is 1:30, by the way. So I get blood work done, and then I made it to the airport by 2:10. Got the phone call at 12:45, um, and I was at the airport by 2:10, ready for a flight at 3 o'clock. Um, no, you, you can't you can't process that. It's it's you have two hours to get on a plane ride. It's the most stressful situation you can possibly be in. Um, I'm literally driving on the highway going 90s. Like I'm literally like move, bitch, get out the way as fast as possible. Um, but at the same time, it's like the most nervous nervous thing you can be in, but also the most exciting, like, is this really happening? Like, this is what I've been waiting for. Um, so, make it to the airport. But it's an opportunity. It's an opportunity to change your life. Um, before I got on the plane, high, or house texted me and said, hey, you got a four or five contract. So no matter what happened, whether if I got the fight or whether I didn't get the fight, um, I, I'm in. And that's, that's really, in hindsight 2020, that's really all that mattered at that point. I always pictured walking out the UFC, like with the crowd and everything too, but the, obviously it didn't happen, you can't do that because of COVID. But I remember walking out looking at the blue screen, like just like smiling, like this, like I made it. Like it doesn't matter, like nobody can take that away from me. Like I've worked so hard for so many years to make it to the UFC and that was my option. Win or lose, draw, whatever doesn't matter. I'm, I'm there, I'm walking to the cage. It's, it's, it's a, that's a very good moment. Yeah, I mean, there's shit, there's not a lot to take. There's not a lot to take from the fight. Um, you know, I wish I would have been meaner to be honest with you got kind of got in his face a little bit more um by the time i had him against cage i was already been rocked like that yeah. that first punch kind of like i don't remember getting hit and then when i kind of came to i was already on his leg and by that point it was it was game over um i wish i would have like fit in a little more uh maybe shot a single leg just to get him like thinking about the up down instead of instead of being able to just be rangy with me that's kind of just something i mean oh absolutely i mean uh I did a lot, I feel like I did a lot in 36 hours to take that fight. We knew it was gonna be a short notice fight, we didn't know it was gonna be 36 hours. Um, absolutely, I'm excited to see what a, what a full camp, what a full preparation can do. Um, you know, I, I, I was prepared for the fight, I really was, like I was in good shape. Obviously, I was, my weight was pretty low. Um, I've been working out, I've been training pretty hard. Um, but the intent behind that fight was not the same as a fight camp, does that make sense? Yeah. Um, when you're in a fight camp, you know you have a fight. Your your intent behind that each training camp or each training day is a little bit more intense, a little bit better. And not to say that I don't train hard, that I didn't have intent going into it. I was there more learning, but this was more when you have a training camp, when you have six weeks notice, you have a different intent behind what you're doing. You're gonna train harder. You're gonna go with the harder people. You're gonna make sure you're you're fully prepared. You know, there's some days like when you don't have a fight, like hey, maybe I don't want to run five miles. Well, when a fight camp, you're you're running those miles or you're making sure you get every single workout in, regardless of how you feel, regardless of what you do.